Slow Food is a grassroots movement that began in Italy in 1986 as a protest and alternative to fast food. Now, more than 100,000 members in 132 countries support the cause with healthy cuisine, farming, and livestock that promotes local ecosystems and biodiversity. Here with more on Slow Food is a leader in the industry, Tom Chino of Chino Farms in Rancho Santa Fe. Tom, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Now give us a brief history of your farm and how you wound up in the middle of multi-million dollar homes in Rancho Santa Fe. Well, my parents, um, before the war, before World War II, had um, been asked to grow some crops in the valley uh, near Rancho Santa Fe because they had a reputation of growing good crops. And um, after the war, um, after they had come back from ca out of camp, they were able to get property th in that area. And uh, we started having uh, mixed produce, mixed vegetable produce. And you have quite a variety of vegetables uh, and produce uh, on your farm, including, I understand, red carrots and white, white carrots. Uh, what other th sorts of things do you grow? Well, we grow many different things because um, the venue in San Diego has such a uh, broad ethnic population, and UCSC has provided uh, input of uh, people from various countries that wanted different kinds of produce from their homeland. So we have various f uh, food items from uh, various, uh, like for you know, Japan and, and Europe and Asia. That would be regional, uh, yes, region regional, specific yes. and culture specific. Um, when did you become part of the slow food movement, um, and how does that influence how you do your farming? Well, our association with Alice Waters has been instrumental in, um, let say, our popularity, our publicity. And um, that was because of uh, a professor at UCSD, Jean-Pierre Goran, had introduced us to Alice in the 70s. And from that time, um, you know, we've, we've sort of gone hand in hand with Alice in uh, promoting various kinds of items and various uh, practices that were uh, um, sustainable. And growing produce. Starting, starting well before the movement then, right, back exactly. in the 70s. Um, how have you seen farming change as far as locally over the years? More organic, more emphasis on the slow food? What have you seen as far as the changes? <clears throat> well, the most dramatic change is that the medium-sized farmers have been eliminated, either very large or very small. And, the, and being that there are many more small farmers, it allowed a venue for organic produce to come in and um, and having fresh, more fresh produce that can be sold locally. Whereas the large farmers, they can provide the produce for the large stores and venues like that. And the middle, the middle size. The and middle size has been uh, economically been eliminated. I see. Um, wh how do you see the slow food movement as evolving? Do you see it evolving and growing in the next five years? I mean, how I'd like to see it, or how? Uh, well, <laughs> how would you like to see it? We'll start with that. Well, I'd like to see people have uh, be more attuned to what they're eating and what the flavors are, and why this thing tastes so much better than something else. That would be um, ideal for any person that takes pride in growing what they're selling, what they grow. And since we sell only at our market, we can see the people, uh, see them, appreciate what we have. And. Um, well, and what is your fear then? Let's go with that on, on how it might progress or not progress over well, the next the five years. Well, the fear is that there's a domination by large groups uh, capturing the organic market. Um, there are very, there's sort of industrial approaches to organic farming. And, the, and then also because it's things or items that are unique that they think are, are, can sell really well, like say like, like a purple carrot or a red carrot then they'll, they'll be distributed in the same manner that they've been distributed before in the United States where it no, lo no longer has that live, fresh approach, f taste to it. As a farmer, uh, what do you think should be done to make uh, fresh vegetables and fruits uh, more affordable? Um, cut the price of water. <laughs> oh, well, that's legitimate here, which isn't yes. happening anytime no, soon. No, because the areas, um, the, areas, the areas in the United States, the water is much cheaper and it's much more economical for them to, to grow produce. But you won't be able to get fresh local produce in San Diego that's not affected by the costs of water. I see, I see. Well, Tom Chino, owner of Chino Farms in Rancho Santa Fe. Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. And I want to remind folks, Slow Food Movement pioneer Alice Waters will be at Chino Farms for a free event tomorrow on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., signing her new book, The Art of Simple Food 2.